My uh, talk is about making Super Dungeon Bros. Super, and it's a post-mortem in quotes because the game isn't actually quite done yet. Uh, it was really close. We thought it would be more done by now, but uh, I'm going to give you the story of where it, where it, where it is right now. So. Uh, so a little bit about myself first. I am the uh, technical director at React Games. Uh, I've, been in the, I've been developing software for 18 years now, uh, developer and developer manager. Um, and I've got 10 years uh, experience in the game industry directly. Five of those are with Unity. And I've also taught a uh, mobile development course at a uh, university in Salt Lake City uh, called Newmont University. Uh, and I, you know, I taught it in Unity and I taught them how to make games. It's a five-week course and some of it comes out okay. Uh, and then quick about React Games. Uh, they were founded in 2008. Uh, the first game uh, that, they, that we put out is Archon, which is a uh, classic battle chess game. I don't know if many of you know it, but uh, it was on the Commodore 64 and NES, and it went way back. Um, we revived it and brought it to iOS uh, and Steam. Uh, we brought out an updated version. Uh, since then, we've published over 40 games, uh, most of them mobile games. Uh, most of them, uh, we've had clients that include DreamWorks, Hasbro, Nokia, Microsoft, uh, and many others. So, you know, we've done a lot of good client work. Uh, we've published to iOS, Android, Windows Phone 8, Facebook, PC, Mac, Web, and Windows App Store, which that's a good one from Unity in case you haven't done it. Um, our, our company's pretty tech savvy. Uh, most of the time, we're using uh, new and unreleased features of Unity, um, such as I'm going to uh, talk about a, a couple of them here in the talk today. But uh, we always tend to be using alphas and betas, and, and most of it goes well. 90% uh, of, uh, of our games have been client work, but uh, Super Dungeon Bros is our biggest game ever. I'll go into a little bit more about that. And uh, we're always looking for more client work if anybody needs client work. Uh, so, now about the game that I'm going to talk about, um, Super Dungeon Bros. It's a, a four-player uh, rock-themed online and offline co-op dungeon crawler, roguelike, uh, action RPG. It's, it's got everything. Everything's crammed in the game. Um, it's, you know, it's inspired by uh, you know, old-school uh, gauntlet-style games, hack and slash, but uh, there's a lot more going on uh, now. It's a lot more modern, obviously. Um, it's coming this winter to PS4, Xbox One, Steam, and uh, Mac, uh, uh, Steam, Mac, and PC. Uh, it's highly event-driven based on Unity events. I'll talk about that a little bit more uh, when we get there. Uh, it's cross-play. Uh, it's Xbox uh, One to Windows 10. Plus, we're also working on the PS4 to Steam cross-play. Uh, don't tell my publisher. I'm not quite sure about that yet, but. We're working on it. It's, it's, it. The tech is underway. Um, so our game has a bunch of procedurally generated dungeons, so every time you play it, it's uh, something new. And uh, we're one of the first games using Unet or Unity Networking. Um, we've worked a lot with Unity on that, so I'll talk about that uh, specifically. Um, so let's go back to the very beginning, uh, before the bros. Uh, we loved our client work, but we wanted to do more. Um, you know, I, I'm sure most of you guys understand that. You want to work on a game that you really are more passionate about. So we decided to do an OUYA game jam. Um, uh, we, we had a brainstorming session. We kind of tossed, tossed around a bunch of ideas. We had a 2D gauntlet uh, clone with our Archon characters, because we own the Archon IP, and we didn't know if we'd have enough time to make a bunch of new art for this game jam. So we were just going to use the old one. Um, and then we tossed out the idea of bros. We actually tossed out an idea of having IT workers fighting through their cubicles and fighting bad guys in there. All kinds of crazy stuff. But once the name Super Dungeon Bros uh, came out, uh, we decided that was kind of what we were going to stick with. And we focused on that. Um, uh, you know, it, it was a game jam for Ouya for the create kill screen. Uh, we had 10 days to work on it. Uh, about 50% of the time that we worked on it uh, was after hours. Uh, there were probably about 10 to 12 people, maybe slightly more than that, that actually worked on it. So we had a good group of people that stuck around after hours and uh, helped make this uh, prototype. And the winner of the Ouya Game Jam was not Super Dungeon Bros. So we didn't win anything. 
we were pretty we were pretty bummed out. The winner was actually down there in the bottom right corner. It's a, it's called 2D Zombie Platformer. They had zombies, we didn't, so they won. Uh, no, their their game was really good too. Um, uh, you know, we 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 were runner up for Best Couch with Friends Award. Um, so we regrouped and we thought, hey, we'll just put this thing together and make an Ouya launch title because Ouya launch title. Um, well. It turns out we didn't really have the time or the money to uh, do an Ouya launch title. We, we, didn't, we, we couldn't make the game that we really wanted to make. And then the Ouya came out, and it, the reception was less than ideal. That's the nice way that I'm going to say about the Ouya. Um, so you know, the, we, we, we didn't hit the marketplace, and we didn't really miss out by not hitting the marketplace for the launch of the Ouya. Um, anyway, Super Dungeon Bros was put on the back burner. Um, again, this was at the beginning of 2013, so a uh, long time ago. Um, in the fall of 2013, uh, we had a little bit more time. Uh, we finished up some client projects, and there were several uh, you know, coders and artists ready. So we just kind of threw them at the project again and said, let's go freshen it up a little bit. Um, and then, so early 2014, uh, we decided we wanted to take it to uh, GDC and start pitching it around to publishers again. Um, we pitched a revamped version of Archon. We, you know, we still own the IP and we're still working on that. If anybody wants to fund that, come talk to me afterwards. Um, and we also pitched Super Dungeon Bros. Um, we actually had interest from a lot of people, uh, including Unity Games, which is the publishing arm of, uh, of uh, Unity, but they, they're, they're not really doing a whole lot anymore right now. Um, I should find out what the, what's going on with that. Uh, we had interest, but no one wanted to give us money to finish this game. They thought it looked kind of fun, looked kind of cool, uh, but you know, the, the, it didn't look next gen enough. Is one of their one of the main things we heard. So, and again, you know, we'd, we'd started as an Ouya project, so the art still had some Ouya roots in it, and it didn't look next gen enough. So we didn't take that too harshly. <laughs> so. <laughs> Uh, as a studio, we were kind of losing hope on, on, on this project. We spent a lot of time and money uh, internally. Uh, our studio, you know, we were, there, were, there were a lot of people that were really excited about Super Dungeon Bros and not quite as excited about some of our client projects anymore. So we were kind of a little distracted. Um, it it kind of got in the way. We loved the game, though, and we were trying to figure out what else we could do with it. So we started talking about a mobile version of the game, but uh, we'll talk about that a little more. Finally, some, you know, we finally thought, hey, everybody else is making money on Kickstarter. Let's make some money on Kickstarter. So we, uh, we got the go-ahead um, to do that. Uh, we started putting everything together. We got the reward tiers. We got the website. We got the trailer. Um, we got everything ready. We started leading up to it on some forums. We started talking about it and saying, hey, we're going to launch Kickstarter. You know, come check out our trailer. Check out our game. Um, and literally, we announced a five-day countdown on our uh, social media channels, changed it to four days, changed it to three days, and stopped. Because we got a bite with a publisher again. They called us up and said, hey, we like the idea. But if you go to Kickstarter, we can't fund it. So we stopped. We waited. We wanted to find out. It was too good of an opportunity to pass up because it was a big publisher. I, won't, I can't talk about who it was. But um, we canceled the Kickstarter. And really, you know, uh, that kind of hit the team and the company. Our morale was at an all-time low. We were pretty bummed about the whole thing. So, um, you know, we, 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 th we believed in it. We believed in it enough to where we thought the Kickstarter could be successful. But you never know. If we put our idea out there and it died, then that was, essential, that was definitely going to be the end of it. So, so anyway, that potential deal uh, vanished. Uh, but we had entered uh, the game into Games Connect. 2014 on a whim, just to kind of see what we could get out of that. Uh, and we were nominated for Best Social Game uh, at, in, in Paris, France at Games Connect. So uh, we decided we needed to do another art refresh. We started over. It was pretty much the third major version of our demo, but we needed to make sure that it looked really good. We, we didn't want to go there with the not next gen enough version again. So uh, we rolled up our sleeves and started working on the project again. Meanwhile, uh, we'd also been approved uh, by the ID at Xbox program. And while some of the initial betas of ID, I don't know if many of you are familiar with the Xbox um, Unity integration, but it started on 4.3, and it didn't have support for 4.5 and 4.6 yet, but we'd already started converting a lot of our code 
to run on 4.5 and 4.6. Specifically, 4.5, we use entities or events, and I'll talk a little bit about that. 4.6, we use a lot of the UGUI. Um, we'd had experience with NGUI, but uh, it was time to move to, to UGUI. We really liked what we were getting out of UGUI. And so we had to go to 5.0. Uh, really, the Xbox version kind of forced our hand to go to 5.0 completely, and it was still in alpha at, the, at this time. So we had used it a little bit for some of our uh, asset testing, our asset plugins. We sell a couple things on the asset store, and we just wanted to make sure that they were compatible with 5.0, which they weren't, but that's a different story. Uh, so we fixed those. Anyway, um, we had Super Dungeon Bros up and running on the Xbox One using Unity 5 in less than a week. So, you know, that counts pulling the hardware out of the box, provision profiling, all that kind of stuff, getting everything set up for Xbox. It was running in less than a week. Really, uh, a lot of the biggest stuff was there were some unsupported shaders because uh, we'd used some old shaders back from 2013. Um, so we fixed those shaders. We fixed some control issues and just a couple other minor things. But uh, it worked. Uh, we took it to uh, Paris to show it off, and it was playable by, you know, on the floor, we press were playing it, publishers were playing it, everybody was playing it on the Xbox One. We even had some Unity guys come by the booth and say, hey, that's pretty neat. We didn't know people were running Xbox One Unity 5 this stable yet. So we were happy with that. Everyone was happy with that. It showed well. And we won. We won an award at Games Connect. Um, for best social game. We were the only US company to win. Um, we got loads of attention at the show. Everybody came by our area, our booth in there, to check out the game and play it and see what it was all about. Um, and now, all of a sudden, publishers were kind of calling us and saying, hey, about that Super Dungeon Bros, um, we're interested again, or we're more interested now. So that was really cool. Uh, and just another side note, you know, at the show, again, it only took us a week to get it on the Xbox One. and it technically performed very well. We didn't have any problems that were embarrassing in front of the press or publishers or whoever. So that was good. So then uh, Wired Productions. Wired Productions came in. They are a, a new publisher out of uh, uh, the UK. Um, they, you know, if you want some more information about them, you can get in touch with me. But uh, basically, they, their goal is to kind of fund some indie guys that they think have potential. Um, you know, the, a, a lot of the bigger studios can do that sometimes too, but that doesn't happen very often. So these guys are trying to work with little startups and little littler indie guys and, and bring them, uh, give them some attention. And I'll talk a little bit more about how that helped too. Um, they weren't the biggest because they're brand new also. Um, they've had a couple things. They have a lot of experience. A lot of the guys that work there are uh, very experienced in the industry, but uh, they're still new. Uh, they funded, they, well, they offered to fund the rest of our development and we get to keep the IP, which is actually pretty rare for an indie company that doesn't have a, a, a very great track record yet um, on, their, on their brand new IP. You know, it's, 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 it was a pretty impressive deal, pretty nice deal. Great deal for our company. But as a technical director, uh, I was mostly terrified, and here's why. We had six months to develop this, thing, this game for Xbox One, PS4, Steam on Win and Mac, and have crossplay uh, integrated as well. Full production began in January of this year. So uh, as if, you, if you count from there, you know, our six months is uh, July 1st, uh, which is why I'm giving our postmortem right now. Uh, it's not quite done. We're not going to submit it on July 1st. I'll go into a little bit more about that in just a second. Uh, but, you know, we, we, again, I, we started over with the artwork and we're targeting Unity 5 specifically and consoles, so it's a lot more high-end. Um, it still has a very cartoony, stylistic feel to it. Um, I didn't want to show the trailer because the trailer just takes too long and you guys can check it out on your own. That's our studio there as well. Um, you can see uh, roughly 30 people in there. Um, we work in the back of a strip mall, which uh, it, it's, it's not glamorous, but uh, it's, it's nice. It's fun. We have, we have a good time. Good team. Um, anyway, so, you know, we'd never done any of this before. Most of our previous work as a team, as a studio, had been mobile work. We did release a PC game, um, but this was definitely a little bit more advanced than, than anything we'd done as a studio. Individually, we have, uh, we have a, 
a network engineer who's done MMOs before. We have a bunch of people that have shipped um, titles on consoles before. But um, again, as a studio, we just hadn't done a lot of this. So it was a little, a little scary. So what about the multiplayer networking, right? Um, nothing that we looked at, none of the solutions that were available out there, uh, like Photon, uh, which is a, you know, obviously one that uh, most Unity people have heard about, um, and you know, old Unity network, any of that stuff. None of that stuff was going to support PS4 or Xbox One or had any indi indication of when it was going to support PS4 or Xbox One. So um, I just started reaching out to my networking contacts. Um, I reached out to Unity. I reached out to some friends back at Enspace, which is where I worked before. And just uh, if, if the name sounds familiar, they're working on the new Dungeons and Dragons Sword Coast Legends uh, game that's coming out later this year. Uh, and they're using, they're also targeting the same platforms we're targeting. So I just reached out to them and said, hey, what are you guys using for your online play? Um, and we discussed doing a, a, a technology swap there. Or uh, the third option was going to be to write our own uh, solution for networking, which is never a good option, um, especially if there's other things available. Uh, so any, not, the first two were better options than the last one, and we could have gone with either of the first two, but we chose going with UNET. Um, the main reasons we chose going with UNET was uh, Eric Yule, um, who's the main uh, director on, on UNET, um, was confident that we could get all our uh, platforms done in time. Uh, and, and have this game running. And he really wanted, he really wanted a, a full production game to test their networking stuff. And we, you know, we're heavily invested in Unity. We've used Unity for five years now. So helping them get their networking stuff kind of polished up and finished up helps us long term. Uh, we'll learn how to use their stuff and we can use it uh, going forward. They also, you know, Eric was very uh, uh, good about this. He had opportunities for some direct assistance because he knew we were going to be one of the first ones trying this, specifically on all these platforms. Um, and we actually got a spot in the Unity booth at GDC uh, this year um, to, to demonstrate some of the stuff that we'd, that we'd done. So, so GDC 2015, <laughs> after they offered us a nice spot in the Unity booth, Microsoft uh, was also looking around for um, crossplay examples uh, for Xbox One to Windows 10 crossplay. And uh, they contacted Unity directly, and Unity referred them to us saying, hey, we're working with these guys to do a game that's using our Unity networking, which will support crossplay. Um, because that's the way Unity, you know, the, the Unity platform works. So Unity referred them to us, and it was a great opportunity, but on the show floor, the Unity side of Windows 10 publishing wasn't quite ready. I don't know if you, any of you saw the Windows 10 publishing downstairs, but it's just out right around now and coming soon. I believe in 5.2, we'll actually have the full capability to publish to Windows 10 Universal, which is needed for crossplay. Um, the crossplay does not support Windows 8.1 apps at all. It, it needs uh, Windows 10 Universal. Uh, Microsoft put us in there, you know, we explained, hey, we said we could do it, but we're not quite ready yet, and they put us in the keynote anyway to say these guys will be supporting crossplay, so we will be supporting crossplay. It, it will be happening. We'll find a way. <coughs> um, no, it, it's close. We're, we're actually, we should have that wrapped up real soon. Uh, so we were featured in both those booths, and uh, the, the only downside to the whole thing was that it was just a build that took away from our production schedule. We had kind of a schedule for here's how everything's going to flow, and then boom, let's have everything playable at GDC with networking. So it kind of, we kind of had to shuffle a bunch of things around. So anyway, uh, UNET was what they called it back then when we started getting involved. It's now Unity Networking. Um, at, once we got back from GDC, so before GDC, we uh, we use the high-level stuff. I don't know, you know if you saw the, the Lucas's talk at the keynote. There's high-level uh, unit APIs and there's low-level unit APIs. For the GDC build, we used the high-level stuff, and that got us together real quick. We were able to show it within less than three weeks. We had our game, which is actually a pretty complex game, um, running networked, and it was running on the Xbox One uh, networked as well. So it can run Xbox to Xbox, PC to PC. Um, and PC to Xbox, but that was a different thing. That was just for debug purposes. But um, 
So yeah, within three weeks, we got it up, we got it up and running, but we used all the high-level stuff. When we came back, we kind of realized there was a lot of stuff underneath that we weren't synchronizing very well. It was going to be a lot harder just based on the way that we'd set a lot of things up. So um, you know, the nice part about UNet is that there's the high-level APIs and the low-level APIs. What we did was when we got back, we kind of looked through everything. We looked through how we'd implemented it, what else we needed to do to get done, and we decided we needed to switch over to the low-level stuff, which, again, is what kind of Lucas was talking about yesterday in the keynote. Um, so uh, the biggest, you know, one of the biggest reasons was it allowed us to take advantage of all the work Unity was still doing. So we can still use UNet. We still use all the great functions that they have for their networking. But it made it a little easier to integrate into our code base. And um, the other half of that is that uh, right now, uh, I'm not sure if Eric's here. If he's not angry at me. But um, uh, there's no Steam support in uh, the UNet integration. So um, that's kind of a big thing for our publisher. We'd committed to publishing to Steam. We needed to do Steam on Mac and PC. So we kind of hit the wall. We, we actually we hit the wall there after we'd implemented the UNet low-level libraries. We're like, all right, well, now we're ready. Now we have all the matchmaking working in Steam. We had both these functions working independently, tried to get them together, and it just it didn't work. We, had, we didn't do enough research ahead of time to know that we, we just we ran into that, and it was kind of unexpected to us. So the good news is that by using the low-level APIs that we used for UNet, we turned around and put Steam into our game within two weeks. So that was a very fortunate side effect of the way that we changed our integration of UNet. So now we can toggle between uh, UNet, which, uh, is exact, which is what runs on the Xbox One and PS4. All the networking is done on the Xbox One and PS4 uh, using UNet. And uh, on the PC, we use uh, Steam, uh, Direct Connects through there. And uh, that's all running right now today. But we do plan for non-Steam -P non PC and Mac builds later. And the services that Eric went over again today, this morning, such as matchmaking uh, and all that other stuff, is great for we don't have to deal with that either. We'll, we'll, we're going to integrate their matchmaking services for our non-Steam uh, Mac and PC builds. And some countries uh, don't use Steam nearly as much as uh, uh, we do. So uh, like our pu we're publishing in a lot of different regions. So we do need a non-Steam uh, uh, PC and Mac build. So a little bit more about our custom networking, um, just to touch on that last, last part about that. We, we essentially built a high-level API that ties into the, uh, uh, the Unity networking low-level APIs. We use a decorator pattern. I don't know if there's a lot of engineers in here. Um, that allows us to synchronize the data, uh, similar to Unity sync vars, but a little more robust and a little bit more suited to our overall project setup. Uh, we use the same exact idea of spawning objects over the network that Unity, network, uh, Unity Networking introduced. So it's exactly the same um, concepts. We, we really like uh, UNet and, and the concepts in there. Uh, and it actually helped with the instability in our core code base. I don't want to go into this part too much because I talked with Eric about this, and he's assured me that it's not a problem. They're going to fix it. But we, had, we did have a little problem where some null exceptions uh, in other parts of our code base were causing the Unity networking to give us a little bit of problems. So we actually made a Lidgren-based control network so we could test things out and eliminate problems in our core code base, which helped uh, solidify uh, the UNet integration. So um, again, now we have UNet underneath our networking uh, Steam underneath our networking and a Lidgren control system all underneath our networking. Um, and, and they're all interchangeable and they all work. So that's pretty awesome. Also, uh, you know, while we're talking about technology in, in Unity, um, we are fans of Unity events. We wrote a, a wrapper for Unity events that allows us to control when events get removed um, from, from the queues, uh, whether when they all fire or in the middle of firing. That's a little technical. Um, but the other, the other cool thing is that we actually created a events window that uses reflection. And it tracks all the events that get called in our game. Our game is very event driven. When, an, when you attack an enemy, it sends an event of damage to the enemy, tells it what type, all that kind of stuff. Um, what we have is we have a window where, where we can see every one of those events that gets called. Um, and uh, it helps us narrow down. Because Unity events, 
you know, if you're not familiar with them too much, you set them up in the editor instead of in script most of the time. So now you're tying a bunch of uh, function calls together in the editor again. And sometimes that can be a little hard to track down. Um, so by having uh, this window system, we can uh, see all the events and we can track them down because we know who called them and we have uh, details on where they were called. So it helps um, figure out where everything's at. Uh, and again, we're using uh, events, since we're using the events so much, all our analytics and dependent systems such as missions, which is uh, something that happens in our game, and uh, achievements uh, depend on those uh, events. We can actually subscribe to events by type instead of just specific events. We have an event manager that says, okay, here's a type of damage, and it uh, passes it through, and we can, or you know, maybe a kill. It passes it through. We know in the missions whether you've killed enough guys to, uh, to, to beat that mission, or we know in the achievements if you've unlocked that achievement. Um, and then we also have a mono behavior. We have a way that when you're adding components in the editor, it looks to see um, if there are events. Like, so if I add to my uh, enemy an on uh, attack event, it'll tie it in to the event system and gets everything all ready. It hooks it all up automatically for us. So we did some cool stuff with events, and we really like uh, the way Unity events are set up. So back to our game. Uh, turns out maybe we do need a producer on our game. Um, I don't know if anybody you've tried making a game without a producer, and sometimes it works for smaller games. But right now, um, we split the role between our art director, our design director, and our tech director, which is me. And when the scope needed to be reined in, it was kind of hard to rein in the scope because you know, the art director, design director, and tech director all have kind of their own view of what's going on. So the producer is supposed to be there to help that. Um, it caused some bad communication, too many chefs in the kitchen. We actually even lost our art director. So that was pretty sad. And that was right before beta, right before beta was due. So it wasn't a good time. Bad things were happening. Things were falling apart. Um, so uh, we pivoted to a new design uh, lead and art director. We basically kind of had to ask for more time. Um, and Wired was, Wired was good about that. They were reluctant, but uh, they understood uh, based on the art director stuff, based on um, our show builds uh, for GDC and E3, um, throwing off our production cycle. Because again, we had to make it playable at, e at GDC, playable at E3, kind of took our production cycle and, and changed a few things. Um, and we're also very dependent on Unity's schedule because we're highly tied into a, a, a lot of their 5.0 functionality and beyond. Um, for instance, the UNet PS4 builds uh, just came with 5.1, and there were no early access builds for UNet PS4. So uh, we just got access to that about two weeks ago, and uh, and you know we need that. So uh, again, that just shows the dependencies on 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 Unity as well. Um, again. We have a passion for this project, and our inexperience kind of led us to overscope it. And uh, Wired did increase our time. And uh, morale increased after we made several changes and got more time. And everybody realizes that we actually can, you know, we're, we can actually make the game better. We were a little worried about it. So um, now E3 2015, which was last week, uh, or just slightly, yeah, last week. Holy cow. Uh, Wired, uh, Wired and our PR company scheduled 60 plus press engagements to come and check out our game. So that's, you know, f that's another great aspect of Wired, of having a publisher, of having someone else take care of that side of it for you. Uh, they set all these engagements up, appointments every 30 minutes for three days straight. I was tired of playing our game and talking about it. Um, uh, and, and then I flew here the next day. So it's been a long week and a half. Um, the feedback in the previews have been very good. Um, all the press liked it. You know, we had we had really good. Uh, we had you know a lot of big name uh, people come and check it out. Edge, uh, Game Informer, Destructoid. Um, you know, a, lo a lot of bigger uh, uh, PR th uh, or press. So it was it was really good. Um, and Super Dungeon Bros has just opened many doors to our studio. We're getting a lot of better contacts. We're getting you know more people are interested in just how well it looks and how much we're doing to get this thing done, um, they're impressed. Um, so let's go back and, and talk about the team. Uh, we actually we started the game with six engineers, 
five artists and one designer. And this was when we started full production. So this isn't Game Jam, this isn't Ouya, this isn't the early demo stuff. This was full production. We thought, we can get this done with six engineers, five artists and one designer. Uh, we were wrong, obviously. Um, we've now peaked at 14 engineers. Um, five of those are part-time. Uh, nine artists, five designers, uh, a producer, and an associate producer. We, we ramped up the team um, significantly, uh, put more money into it uh, ourselves, and uh, yeah, uh, you know, it, it, the scope, again, this goes back to scope and passion for the project. We had too much passion for the project. We knew what game we wanted to make. We got this six-month deal from Wired, and that was too awesome of a deal to pass up, so the scope was bigger. We reined it in a little bit, but not enough, so we had to ramp up. Um, we've also had uh, four client projects going on at the same time, one of them going on the whole time from start to finish. So uh, busy times, um, we, 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 there's some crunch, not a ton, but there's some crunch. There's definitely crunch. Um, but a lot, like, nobody's been asked really to crunch. I know that's kind of a, like a nebulous thing, but um, people want to make this game so badly and they want to make it so good that they're, you know, they'll, they'll spend the extra time working on it. They'll stay there late a couple nights or whatever to get their systems done and get their stuff done and, and make this thing happen because it's something we really believe in and we really want to be awesome. Current plan is that we hit beta next week, which is it's on schedule enough. It, it should, be, should be good. Um, there will be a couple, like the, a couple of the features aren't, won't quite be done. Um, our Xbox services integration uh, it's taken a little longer than we expected as far as matchmaking, friend invites, voice chat, all that kind of stuff. It's taken a little bit too long. Um, but a lot of the other stuff is coming in real nicely. So we're in good shape for beta. Um, after that, we're still finalizing the release dates, although we're planning a winter release um, likely near January at this point. Um, we, we'll have it done probably before then, um, but we're kind of afraid of losing in the November, December time frame of getting stomped by all the AAA games that come out. So we'll see. We're still, there's still internal discussions. Um, but then another side of that is, you know, we're, we're committed to shipping on Windows 10 and we have to get all that stuff resolved as well too. And that, that by, I'm not even probably supposed to tell you that, but the alpha release for that in the last week. So I can't talk about that too much, but sure. Um, Anyway, uh, thanks for sticking around to the end of Unite. I know uh, happy hour is going on outside. You guys are all missing happy hours, so I appreciate that. Um, if you want to go into any more details on any of the stuff I talked about, the Unity networking, the events, anything, our company, fund, funding Archon, whatever, um, come and talk to me. Um, there's my contact information. You can go see the trailer at superdungeonbros.com um, and check us out on Twitter. So thank you. <laughs>